a dig at the NTPP BJP decision in which both parties decided to continue alliance for a forthcoming 2023 assembly elections. NPCC says the move reflects that the July 16 resolution of the core committee that gave hope for settlement to the Naga issue had been thrown to the dustbin. Eastern Naga Students Federation calls for continuation of existing relaxation policy for graduate teachers till its demand for the establishment of Bachelor of Education continues in eastern areas is met. The Federation also expressed agony over government's apathy towards the issue in spite of persistent implore and reminders. Chief Sena MP Sanjay Rawat sent to Enforcement Directorate's custody till August 4 in connection with the Parta Chowal case. Earlier, Thakare family loyalist was produced before a special sessions court following arrest in connection with a money laundering case in the wee hours of Monday. Opposition leaders heats out at a government on issues like fuel and food inflation and GST implementation as after long delay and drama, Lok Sabha takes up discussion on price rise in the ongoing monsoon session. Earlier, Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla revoked the suspension of four Congress MPs on Monday. At least 10 people lost their life after a massive fire broke out in a private hospital in Jabalpur district of Madhya Pradesh on Monday. Fire breaks out at the intensive care unit of New Life Hospital located in Damok Naga, Shivanagar. Good evening viewers, you are watching English Primetime News, I'm Asan. Let's go through the details. Nagaland Pradesh Congress Committee on Sunday stated that it supports the settlement of the agreements between the Government of India and the negotiating teams. However, President of the committee, K. T. Ray, stated that when he thought the people's representatives have finally understood the aspirations of the stakeholders of the July 16 resolution, he was wrong. Furthermore, he said that instead of pursuing the resolution for settlement, it is shocking that seed sharing agreement between the NDPP and BJP was flashed in the media. Hence, the people's hope of settlement was thrown to the dustbin. At the same time, he noted that after all other meetings of the issue of Naga political problem, the core committee of UDA would rush to Delhi with the resolutions. But he pointed out that surprisingly, this time, neither the core committee nor the allied parties have gone to submit the resolution. Meanwhile, Thire maintained that Settlement of the agreements will benefit both Nagaland and Nagas outside Nagaland. For Nagaland, the political structures would be improved by way of delimitation of Rajat Sabha, Lok Sabha, State Assembly and creation of Upper House. The Eastern Naga Students Federation on Monday called for the continuation of the existing relaxation policy for graduate teachers in maths, science and Hindi till its demand for the establishment of Bachelor of Education institutions in eastern areas. In a press release, the ENSP noted that it is well conversant of the impediment faced by the aspirant students of eastern areas due to lack of be yet college and has been relentlessly putting forward a series of representation for allotment of such colleges. However, the Federation is agonized to express that the persistent implore and reminders made to the government have yielded no positive response till date. 
Meanwhile, the relaxation policy, which came into force on January 9, 2009, stated that the shortlisted candidates belonging to the six tribes shall be given five years to obtain professional qualifications instead of two years as mentioned in the relaxation order. The Dimapur Bengali Students' Union held its general election on Sunday where the union elected its new office team. The House unanimously elected Dipankar Sarkar as president and Rajat Ghosh as its general secretary. Monodeep has been elected as Games and Sports Secretary and Santoshi to look over women affairs. The new team will serve a tenure for two years from 2022 to 2024. Bharatiya Janta Party Shamato Chesari on Monday held a coordination program at Chesari Unit under the leadership of State Executive Member PJP and former Parliamentary Secretary R. Tohan Ba along with Mandal Vice President Akham. Program was held at the residence of State Executive Member PJP R. Tohan Ba. During the meeting, party discussed that the PJP is on strong firm and are looking forward to function well in the near future for the betterment of 58 as assembly constituency Shamato Chesore. After 12 years, the Bhartiya Janta Party held two-day joint national executive meeting of all the seven frontal organizations at the national level on July 30th and 31st in Patna. State President Kisan Morcha, San Ketong Chami, State President PJYM, Hosheto Awomi, Kisan Morcha, National Executive Committee Member, Thirung Chungli Ba Sangtum and PJYM National Executive Committee Member, Arvind Damani participated on 8, 28 and 29th July 2022 of Inter Morcha Pravas covering various Vidan Sabhas of Bihar. All the state presidents, including National Secretary Mahila Morcha, Ayinla Chamir, State President S.T. Morcha Awan Konyak, Kisan Morcha National Executive Committee member, Thiru Chongliba Sangtam, and various PJP Morcha's national team also participated in the PJP National Joint Morcha Executive Meeting. National President of PJP, J.P. Nadda, Union Home and Corporation Minister Amit Shah, and PJP National General Secretary, Organizational B. L. Santosh addressed the meet. The Tovi village inaugurated its welcome gate on Monday. The inauguration was done by Yehoi Achumi. Notably, the village welcome gate was donated by Transport Department, Government of Nagaland, OSD, Niholu Ayemi. Adding on, the village was established in the year 1948. In a hilarious and witty tweet, State Minister Timchen Imna Alung spreads awareness on 
Zengremung Festival in the tweet. So in the tweet, we can see that the minister informed about the significance of celebrating this festival and at the same time urged people to explore its culture and dance along with locals. Furthermore, in a video that he shared, he can be seen trying to dance along with the locals. Meanwhile, Governor Professor Jagdish Muki and Chief Minister Nipirio extended Sangramung greetings to the our community from their official from their official Twitter handles. Muki took down to Twitter and wished for good health, happiness and prosperity. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Rio also hoped that the essence of the festival will be alive and foster love and oneness. Notably, Sangramung is a time of thanksgiving to God for bountiful harvest. Council of Rengma Baptist Churches organized a seminar on clean election movement on July 30 at Christian School Hall, Seminu Town. Notably, Joint Chief Electoral Officer Awa Lorin and Deputy Commissioner Tsiminyu, Dr. Sasekoli Chusi, graced as resource persons. Village Council leaders consisting of Chairman Head Gonbra, VDB Secretary, Council Secretary and the Tsiminyu District joined the seminar. Meanwhile, village council leaders resolved to enforce election code of conduct in their respective villages. Furthermore, it also resolved that no village council, authority, clan or kel should declare a majority solid support financial officially in favor of a particular party or candidate, whereby curtailing other voters or candidates' rights. A library was inaugurated at the Darbar Hall of the Superintendent of Police in Twensang Town on July 30 under project Sarvodhaya. Notably, Twensang SP Vishal during the inauguration maintained that the work of police is not only about physical power but it is also about mental maturity. Meanwhile, the library is set to remain open from morning 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. and evening 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. and it is set to be free of cost upon issue of library cards. A massive fire engulfed at the new Life Medicity Hospital in Madhya Pradesh, Jabalpur. According to reports, 10 people have been killed and 23 others injured in the fire. Several fire brigade teams were at the spot trying to control the blast and evacuated patients from the medical facility. Superintendent of Police Siddharth Bahuguna informed that the fire erupted near Damo Naka under the Guhalpur police station area of Jabalpur in the afternoon and the cause of the fire could be short circuit. Speaking on the incident, Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan said that he is in constant touch with the local administrator and collector. The Chief Secretary has been directed to keep an eye on the entire matter and every effort is being met for relief and rescue. MP Chief Minister Chohan announced ex ratio of rupees 5 lakh each for the next of kin of people who lost their lives in the incident. <laughs> आज ये थाना गोहलपुर के पास चंडाल बाटा स्थित न्यू लाइफ हॉस्पिटल में अचानक से स्पार्किंग के कारण आग लगी है प्राइमा फेसी जो बात सामने आई है और ये आग इतनी खतरनाक थी कि ये फर्स्ट ग्राउंड फ्लोर से लगना शुरू हुई जो थर्ड फ्लोर तक गई हमारी टीम के द्वारा तत्काल इस पे संज्ञान लेते हुए टीआई कोतवाली टीआई गोहलपुर यहां उपस्थित हुए और हमारी पूरी फोर्स ने इसको यहां पर आग को कंट्रोल करते हुए पूरे जो अंदर फंसे हुए लोग थे उनको बाहर निकाला इसमें सात गंभीर अवस्था में घायल हुए हैं जिनको मेडिकल और अन्य अस्पतालों में 
भेजा गया बाकी लोगों को सुरक्षित बाहर निकाल लिया गया अभी जो प्राइमरी प्राइमरी जो सूचना है उसमें चार लोगों की इसमें डेथ हो चुकी है और तीन लोग गंभीर रूप से इलाज रहते हैं अभी ये शॉर्ट सर्किट ग्राउंड फ्लोर पर होने की वजह से बताया गया स्टाफ के द्वारा अभी और विवेचना हमारे द्वारा की जा रही है हमारी एक्सपर्ट टीम देख रही है कि आग की शुरुआत कहाँ Youth Net founder Hekani Jakalu submitted a proposal for mega youth multipurpose complex in Naharbari Dimapur to Union Minister of Youth Affairs and Sports Anurag Thakur. Notably, Hekani was accompanied by MP Gaurav Kokoi along with a member of the North East Leaders Connect. Meanwhile, it may be mentioned that Jakalu submitted the proposal to Thakur after discussion with the Naharbari Village Council. Arunachal Pradesh under Tirap district, nine children in the age group of 3 to 10 years have died due to diarrhea outbreak in a remote circle over the last two weeks. Seven children from Pungkung village and two from Longliang succumbed to the dead in the last fortnight, triggering concern among health authorities and the district administration. District Medical Officer Ubang Taku said that the exact reason is yet to be ascertained as results of stool and water sample examination are awaited, while district officials are constantly monitoring the situation. Furthermore, a medical team and an ambulance have been kept on standby at the Lazu Community Hall. According to officials, the situation has improved in the last few days as there have been no reports of more casualties. The Union Health Ministry on Monday constituted a special task force to monitor monkeypox cases in India. Notably, the task force will also assist in the expansion of diagnostic facilities and explore the possibility of vaccine development or sourcing to control infection of the disease. It is to be mentioned that Niti Ayok member VK Paul will head the task force and its members will include officials from the ministry and representatives of the country's major medical and research institutes. The officials have stated that decision to constitute a special task force was taken at a meeting of the ministry's senior functionaries meeting. Notably, India has so far reported three monkeypox cases from Kerala and one from Delhi. The cases exclude that of a 22-year-old man who died, who died in Kerala's Trisur on Saturday from the said disease. Following the death of a youth in Kerala's Trisur district whose test report confirmed a positive of monkeypox, nearly 20 people have been quarantined. Officials on Monday informed that the disease came into contact with around 10 people including his family members and a few friends. State Health Minister Vina George stated that the youth had contracted and tested positive for monkeypox in foreign country and south treatment in Trisur. Minister further informed that a high-level inquiry has been initiated over the death of the youth and an investigation over delay in seeking treatment will be launched. Health Department also held a meeting at Punayur village following death of the youth. Meanwhile, contact list and route map of the deceased have been prepared and people who came into contact with the deceased have been asked to quarantine themselves. It may be noted that India has recorded five cases of monkeypox from three and three from Kerala and one each from De Delhi and Andhra Pradesh. A major fire broke out at the office of the Criminal Investigation Department of the Manipur Police on Monday. Notably, the fire broke out at around 2 a.m. in the morning with at least eight fire tenders rushing to the spot of the incidents to douse the inferno.
Fire officials later stated that the exact reason of the fire is yet to be ascertained. However, officials suspect that the fire broke out due to short circuit in the office. It is to be mentioned that although the Manipur Fire Service Department brought under control vital documents and other office materials at the CID office were completely destroyed in the inferno. In connection with the Patra Chol case, Shiv Sena MP Sanjay Rawat had, has been sent to Enforcement Directorate's custody till August 4. Earlier in the day, ED produced Rawat before a special session scored after his arrest this morning in connection with a money laundering case linked to irregularities involving the redevelopment of a Chol in Mumbai. The Sina leader was taken for a medical test at the JJ hospital before being produced in the court. Meanwhile, security around the ED office and JJ hospital was increased with over 100 officials deployed to get tackle any low and order situation. Earlier, ED officials raided the Chief Sena leader's home on Sunday and after detaining and questioning him for several hours, arrested him in the early hours of Monday. Rawat is a close idea of former Maharashtra Chief Minister Udav Thakare. As proceedings resumed in Parliament after both houses were adjourned till 2 p.m., Lok Sabha finally decided to discuss on the matter of price rise. In addition, Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla revoked the suspension of Congress MPs on Monday. Before withdrawing the suspension, Birla took assurance from the opposition members that they will, will not bring placards into the House. With the suspension of four Congress MPs withdrawn, Congress MP Manish Tiwari began the discussion over price rise in Lok Sabha. Furthermore, Tiwari alleged and cited that economic mismatch, mismanagement as the reason being current state of economic shadowed with price hikes. Meanwhile, Parliament passed a bill which seeks to ban funding of weapons of mass destruction and also empower the citizens to freeze, seize or attach final assets and economic resources of people engaged in such activities. In addition, the Rajat Sabha on Monday passed the Indian Antarctic Bill 2022 to assist in protecting the frozen continent where India operates research centers and is part of several scientific explorations. Later in the afternoon, Rajat Sabha was adjourned for the day and the proceedings were to continue from 11 a.m. on Tuesday. Notably, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman is likely to address Lok Sabha on price rise issue at 7 p.m. Soon after the discussion on price rise began in the House, the suspension of four Congress MPs, Manikam Tagore, Ramre Haridas, T. N. Patanpan and as Jyoti Mani was revoked on Monday. Parliamentary <laughs> Affairs <laughs> Minister Pralhat Joshi moved a motion to the effect which was passed in Lok Sabha and Speaker Om Birla revoked the suspension of the four <laughs> Congress members. After the revocation of suspension, the House took up discussion on price rise which was initiated by Congress member Manish Tiwari. The Congress members were suspended last Monday for the rest of the session for protesting and carrying placards inside the House. Remarkably, party leader Adhir Ranchan Chaudhry said that it was not the intention of the opposition to hurt the chair. Amid the ongoing monsoon session of parliament, West Bengal PJP MPs on Monday protested against West Bengal Chief Minister and TMO Supremo Mamta Banerjee over the alleged 
alleged involvement of former State Minister Partha Chatterjee in the SSC recruitment scheme. The MPs raised thieves' slogans against Mamta Banerjee and TMC. The ED arrested Partha Chatterjee, a Trinamul Congress Secretary General, on July 23 for an investigation into the teacher recruitment scheme. The ED unearthed many disproportionate assets allegedly of Partha Chatterjee since his arrest, of which were three flats in West Bengal's Diamond City. का मांग है कि ममता बनर्जी तुरंत रिजाइन करें क्योंकि हम लोग देख रहे हैं कि लगातार पश्चिम बंगाल में जो खोज मिल रहा है पैसे का खोज मिल रहा है करोड़ों करोड़ रुपए का फ्लैट से खोज मिल रहा है इसमें कोई हिसाब किताब नहीं है इसमें ये जनता का पैसा है जनता का पैसा लूट किया है बहुत सारा गरीबों लोग ने उनका जमीन बेच के ज्वेलरी बेच के जॉब के लिए पैसा दिया था लेकिन जॉब नहीं मिला इसलिए हम लोग चाहते हैं कि इसमें सिर्फ पार्थो चटर्जी नहीं इसमें पूरा तृणमूल सरकार का करप्शन in a big announcement, Mamta Banerjee on Monday confirmed that the Trinamool Congress-led West Bengal cabinet will be reshuffled and new appointments will be made. While addressing a press briefing, Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee announced that the cabinet reshuffle will be done on August 3, that would be Wednesday. Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee also stated that there will be four to five new faces. This comes soon after former Minister Partha Chatterjee was arrested by Enforcement Directorate in the SSC recruitment scam case. The Chief Minister took charge of the departments on Thursday after his arrest. Banerjee now holds charge of 11 departments including the four held by Partha Chatterjee. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee has announced that the state would get seven new districts, raising the total number of districts to 30. The six of the seven new districts that were announced are Sundarban, Ichemati, Ranagat, Bishnupur, Rangipur and Bhairampur. One district will be named in Basirhat. The announcement about the formation of seven new districts came while the chief minister declared that a reshuffle was on the cards with four to five new faces expected to get inducted into the Council of Ministers. Reacting to this, PJB Amit Malviya stated that Banerjee's decision to create seven new districts and induct new faces was an attempt to divert attention from the SSC scheme. Amit Malviya further said that Banerjee must explain from where a debt-trapped West Bengal government gets money to run new districts. The Supreme Court on Monday adjourned a hearing on various petitions challenging the extension of the tenure of Sanjay Kumar Mishra as Director of the Enforcement Directorate for August 2. A bench headed by Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ramana, said that it will hear the plea tomorrow. The court directed the registry to figure out the correct order of the filing of the petitions and said to list it tomorrow. The petition has been filed by social activist and General Secretary of the Madhya Pradesh Mahila Congress Committee, Jaya Thakur. On September 8, 2021, the Supreme Court upheld the central government's decision to extend the tenure of Sanjay Kumar Mishra as the Director of the Enforcement Directorate, but said that no further extension will be granted to him. As opposition set protests over inflation, Union Minister Piyush Goyal said that the opposition demanding issue of price rise will be discussed. Hence, he said that the issue has been listed in Lok Sabha on Monday, while it will be listed in Rajat Sabha on Tuesday. Minister also said that the government was ready from first day to discuss on inflation. However, opposition did not allow the house to function normally. Goyal continued saying that Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman had COVID and since she had come back 
and since after she come back they are appealing the opposition for the house to function normally Taking, talking on the same issue, Union Minister Pralhat Joshi said that they have many bills to pass, but unfortunately, the House is getting adjourned. He asked the leader of the Congress Legislative Party to give assurance in the House that MPs will not come with placards. If they agree, then they are ready to withdraw suspension of MPs. Joshi also said that in spite of that, the opposition is not cooperating, which means they are running away from the discussion of price rise. He evoked that if the opposition is really interested, they should allow the house to function normally. 0 over 197, many notices, they have there, there are totally 46 notices that if at all you start the discussion on the price rise, we will allow the house to function smoothly. Today, we registered, registered of Lok Sabha, Lok Sabha, and we have duly conveyed. Today morning also. Three athletes from the state won medals at the 35th edition of the King's World Cup and International Sepak Takro Tournament at Bangkok, held from July 23 to the 31st. Furthermore, Nagaland's Visik Ye Koso of DGP Sports team won gold. Akamtila and Seizo Velu from State Sports Academy won gold and bronze medals in the event. Mount Battalion Assam Rifles under the aegis of Headquarters 7 Sector Assam Rifles Headquarters Inspector General Assam Rifles on Monday distributed water tanks, smart TV and water dispenser to Konjon Higher Secondary School, Mon. The items were presented as a goodwill gesture for students by Colonel Santosh Rawat to have, an, to have a smart interactive and upgraded classroom with a convenient and comfortable environment for a happy learning place. Considering the fact that the school faces the shortage of clean drinking water and water shortage, some rifles donated Syntex tank along with water dispenser so that children can have clean drinking water. Notably, during the event, benefits of Agniver schemes were shared by the Assam Rifles who informed that registration desk for the scheme is being run by 27 Assam Rifles at Mon Post for candidates of Mon District. It is to be mentioned that school founder Niyato Wangsha Konyak expressed gratitude towards Assam Rifles for providing the items which will subsequently help the school to create an effective learning environment environment. He pressed Assam Rifles saying that Assam Rifles has always stood up and worked for betterment of Konya clan. Long time back uh, I used to be a student and uh, it's always uh, you know they were probably the best days of my life. Schooling is the best time that you would ever have. So please enjoy it. Uh, I would also like to thank you Mr. Niamto, Principal and all the staff members here. So let us have an opportunity to be able to do something for you. Uh, water, uh, scarcity of water in today's time, uh, it is not really what we expect. And drinking water, if we can provide that to you, it is our privilege that we are able to do something. Uh, as he has said, discipline. Uh, now I would like to add up to that. When I look at you, I look at you as the future of country. Yes, you are individuals, but apart from that, you are the future of this country. And long time back, uh, I used to... Tobi Area Students Union on Monday held its first day of education tour. On the first day, Tasso visited and inspected five government primary schools, two government middle schools, one government high school, one PHC and one sub center at Wanchu, Changlu, Changshanglu, Bumi and Changsha. 
During the visit, it was noticed that many teachers were kept on proxy and many of the schools were found facing shortage of subject teachers. Notably, it was observed that the absence of the teachers caused a handful of teachers to conduct combined classes, which deter deteriorated the learning method of students. Furthermore, the TASU also de decided to sponsor one teacher at Government Middle School, Wang Shu, for rest of the month after finding the needs of the school and on appeal by the VEC. During interaction with VEC, VHC, Village Council, the student, the union called for their active involvement in implementation of quality health and education system in the village. Staff nurses were also found attached at hospital in Dimapur and Koima, for which Tasu appealed the department concerned to consider the needs at the remote village and cancel their attachment at the earliest. Tasu also appealed to the contractor and the department concerned to immediately start the construction of road within a period of one month from Tobu to Tamkaun via Wanshu as the road from Tobu up to Tamkoang was in a deplorable condition and no light vehicle can ply on this road during monsoon season. Failing to do so, the Tasu assured to take strong action against the contractor. As part of the Azatika Amrit Mohatsav celebrations, Longwa Post of Mon Battalion Assam Rifles conducted a special awareness lecture come seminar on Monday and screened a patriotic movie at Shalom School near India Myanmar border. Notably, this event was held by the school administration, village authorities, youth wing, and 350 students of the school. It is to be mentioned that this event was conducted with an aim to instill pride in every citizen about national flag and independence. During the lecture, students were briefed about the national flag court, importance of national flag, and where to take pride in celebrating 75 years of independence. The participation from students and local authorities was commended and they expressed gratitude towards Longwa Post of Assam Rifles for organizing informative events. The India's Lone Bowl women's team scripts history by becoming the first Indian team to reach finals in the sport in the history of Commonwealth Games. Furthermore, India won against New Zealand by 16 by 13. In addition, they are set to compete with South Africa in the finals, which will be held on Tuesday. Meanwhile, in Juto, India's Likmabam Sushila Devi entered finals after defeating Priscilla Morant of Mauritius in 48kg category. Late Sunday night, 10 people died at a pickup van carrying passengers en route to Jalpej got electrocuted in West Bengal's Kuch Bihar. Soon after the incident, the passengers were rushed to the hospital where 16 people out of 27 in the van were referred to Jalpaiguri Hospital for treatment as they sustained minor injuries. According to the police, the incident may have taken place due to the wiring of the generator of the DJ system in the van. Meanwhile, the additional superintendent of police, Matabanga Amit Varma, said that the vehicle has been seized but the driver has escaped. Police are coordinating for relief for assistance. He also informed that all of the passengers belong to Sitalkuchi area and their families have been informed about the tragic incident. Furthermore, investigation is also underway. In the last few days, Bollywood actor Salman Khan has been receiving numerous death threats. Whereas, 
On Monday, the Mumbai police issued an firearm license to Bollywood actor Salman Khan after he applied for self-protection against the backdrop of the death threat letters which he received from members of Lawrence Bishnoi's gang. So viewers, with that, English Primetime News winds up here. I don't know if you can't get it. I don't know if you can't get it.